Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. All right, so eSports, have you heard of eSports? It's basically where we've got teams of people, a lot of people, you know, these kind of events are filling out the Brooklyn's, uh, Brooklyn's Barclays Center, you know, fill out massive arenas, 20,000 fans all watching two teams play computer games against each other. Now, that sounds like it's belittling it a bit because there are analysts out there who are saying, listen, this thing is going to hit 145 billion in annual sales by 2020. So from an investor's perspective and from a trader's perspective, there is opportunity. So how do we get and take advantage of this potential esports boom? You know, it's growing. It's been there a while. It's come a lot from China. Uh, it's come over to the US and now I've seen it in the UK a lot so you know what's the what's the play how does it work and what's going on so basically we've got the content providers so these are the guys who you know have the games who have um, exposure to to that aspect of it then we've got the league owners then we've got sponsors um, and we've just got kind of a few different ways of, of getting exposure to this so for the content providers perspective we've got Activision Blizzard or blizzard depending on how you want to pronounce it you can see this this chart in front of this one i've got in front of you now guys it's uh, atvi is the code on this one um you know rallied pretty aggressively and is off the highs by more than 50 percent so you know that could be one to look out for we've also got the more obvious one which is electronic arts um recent earnings on that but depending on when you're watching that um, that could be interesting and then we've got the other which is uh ttwo which is take two interactive Again, these are these have done really, really well from kind of multi for a three or four year growth and are holding quite high. So that's one way of positioning. Um, now another one is the league owners. So you know the video game publishers will benefit directly because they own these esport leagues, right? So they get obviously the ticket sales, they get any merch sales, uh, rights, advertising, sponsorships, all that kind of stuff. But they also get an indirect boost um, from the product sales by the fans that are coming in and watching it. So the kind of three or four main big boys in that esports league sector are Tencent Holdings, which is a uh, OTC company. So you know, take the risks uh, or accept the risks on that. If you're looking at that one, that might be worth looking at and doing more investigation. And they have uh, what's called a game called League of Legends. I'm not familiar with these myself, but I know that they're very, very popular. It's one of the world's most popular games. Um, and they do have like these esports leagues where people, people play these. So, um, you know, that that's that's pretty interesting uh, as it is because any company that's got a good handle with a good game seems to be a good starting point. Uh, and they've kind of come from the esports popularity in China, so they're growing on that. They've also got a deal with Disney for, you know, streaming and broadcast rights. Um, and they're going to launch some kind of television channel in China. So that's worth looking at. So Disney could be a kind of proxy play for that. We talked about Activision Blizzard. Uh, they own the Overwatch League, so they're a, another sort of play that's potentially got a double angle with this. Uh, they're the ones that played actually in the Barclays Center, and they've got kind of 12, 15 teams or something. They're looking to expand it even more. So they've got an aggressive marketing or aggressive expansion plan in place. And you know, the Goldman Sachs analysts are looking at it, they're bullish. A lot of the analysts are really bullish on this whole thing in general. Um, the other one we've got is I mean, there's a lot of to be honest, you know, when you look at AT, ACT, uh, or ATVI, I keep getting the ticker code wrong on that, it's one of those confusing ones. Uh, ATVI, you know, they've got a lot of irons in the fire. Now, the valuation obviously is going to depend on when you're watching this video, but it's going to be one of those things that if if they get it right it's probably a good exposure to the esports industry um purely because they've got a lot of fingers in the pies take two interactive as we mentioned before has the uh, nba 2k e league and electronic arts has fifa we all know about fifa and the madden nfl football game so they they don't kind of get any traction at the moment with those apparently so that's could be could be something to to look for and anyway, this is a kind of video anyway guys we're just summarizing the things for you to go and do a deep dive if you're interested in that so i'm going to do some research and by the way comments in the comment section below anything interesting you find i'm going to do my own due diligence on these uh and have a bit of research but i just wanted to kind of share my summary findings uh with you here so um very quickly let's have a look at some of the sponsorships uh, i've got toyota uh, which is tm we've got hpq hewlett packard intel t-mobile nissan so whilst they're obviously not a pure esports play and it's like the cannabis plays isn't it you know you can find companies that are pure cannabis plays and you can find companies that might benefit from the growth so if you don't fancy a pure esports play 
then you can look at perhaps some of these sponsors that may get a little bit of a brand boost from being there early on in the growth of these esports leagues. So those are just some to look at, guys. Toyota, Intel, HP, T-Mobile, Nissan. Uh, to name a few. So, what else have we got? Uh, some unusual things. We've got um, Twitch. If you've heard of Twitch, it's basically like the YouTube for gaming where people can watch uh, people play games. Um, I mean, I've probably belittled the, the business model there, but to be fair, uh, this is growing massively now and they're kind of outdoing daily viewership for places like CNN and MS, uh, NBC. And this is owned by Amazon. And Amazon kind of keep quiet about it a little bit. Uh, they paid, um, I think it was a billion dollars for it, just under a billion dollars. Um, back three, four years ago now, five years ago now, and it's growing massively. So Amazon could be a kind of additional proxy play. It's not something you would consider, but you know, if Twitch really starts to take off, then that could could really boost them. I recognise that it's probably a small percentage of the revenue, but it's there nevertheless, and uh, it's something to be uh, to be watched. Uh, the other one is the, the kind of people are making the uh, hardware. So we've got Nvidia, which. Yeah, recently got a bit of a boom from the Bitcoin craze coming off a little bit but uh, they're going to be there and then we've got um, some of the things like Logitech, LOGI uh, and Microsoft so those are some to look at some of the hardware from behind it now if you are not interested in picking individual stocks there is an ETF called GAMR which is the ETF managers trust now the one thing to be cautious of of this one guys is that um, it holds 72 stock so it's not really you've got to be have a look at you know some of the constituents in there and see it's quite a broad holding the largest one i believe is glue mobile glu um so it's not you know it might not be the, the play that you want but it could be a kind of starting point and as also with etfs guys the good thing about etf is you can look and see the constituents and it kind of sets you down rabbit holes of potentially looking at other investments or other companies that you might want to stick in your portfolio anyway guys, that's esports set to be some of the biggest growing uh sports in the upcoming years maybe worth looking at from an investment and trading perspective whatever you do take care keep the risk managed bye bye